when we're looking at changes in matter, we're looking at changes in physical properties and changes in chemical properties. Changes in physical properties can be observed and measured without changing the substance's composition. So again, you can have water as a solid or a liquid or a gas, but it's still just H2O. Some physical properties that you may be familiar with, conductivity does not change the nature when we pass electrons through a substance, color, density, melting point, boiling point, malleability and ductility are usually associated with metals, and then index of refraction is how a substance absorbs and reflects light. So all of these properties can be measured without changing the identity of the substance. Again, physical changes change the appearance without changing the composition. So terms like melting, boiling, dissolving, freezing, these are all phase changes, are all physical changes. Chemical properties and chemical changes are only observable when one substance reacts with and again later you'll learn this little plus sign means reacts with and this means yields or makes. So methane CH4 reacts with oxygen to make or yield carbon dioxide and water. Well if these are the products and they have different formulas than the reactants then a reaction has occurred and it is a chemical reaction. So a chemical change has occurred. Again, reactants are the stuff you start with, products the stuff you end up with. So iron and oxygen are the reactants, iron oxide is the product, and the reactants are turned into by a chemical change into the products. What we want to make sure is that you get some way to predict whether a change is chemical or whether it is physical. Some physical changes look like they make different matter, but again, you're looking for evidence that a chemical change has occurred. In order for a chemical change to have occurred, you basically are creating a new form of matter. Whatever you started with is no longer there. A chemical reaction occurs. So there are four basic indications of chemical reactions. There are others, but there are four that I absolutely expect you to get right. You'll do several labs to help you learn and develop this skill. But the first is that energy in a fairly large amount is either absorbed or released. So if you see fire, that is energy that is released, and that is definitely a chemical change. Heat, light, these are all sources of energy. If they are produced, then that is a sign of a chemical change. An unexpected color change, if you take a green clear liquid and all you do is stir it and it turns cloudy green and then cloudy pink, there is no physical explanation for that. So that is also a sign of a chemical change. Again, unexpected color changes, not food coloring in water, that's certainly an expected color change. There are two others that you want to be clear on. The first is the production of a gas. If you have a solid and your product is a gas, then obviously a chemical reaction has occurred unless you're simply boiling water. Gases released can look like vapors, they can look like um, dropping solids into liquids and vapors and fumes and bubbling occur. Gases being produced and released are an indication of a chemical change. The last is a precipitate forms, and a precipitate is a solid substance that forms when two clear solutions are poured together. So prior to pouring in this test tube these two substances together, there was a clear liquid mixed with another clear liquid in this white solid formed, and in this one this yellow solid formed. So if you had no solid originally and you make a solid, it's clearly a new form of matter. And again, that fancy word for a solid forming is just a precipitate.
To separate a compound requires a chemical change. You cannot separate a compound by dissolving, heating, filtering. You have to do some kind of chemical reaction. It takes a chemical reaction to make a compound. It requires a chemical reaction to separate that compound. You will do a lab where you do several physical separations and then a chemical separation in order to get your product. Throughout all of these uh, changes that are chemical, you need to make sure you're clear about conservation of mass. Throughout all these reactions, mass and matter are not created and they're not destroyed. Okay? All of the mass can be accounted for when you are completely done with the reaction. If we look at this reaction, this is water. So one of the reactants is water. The other is this shiny metal, sodium. And we're going to put a reacting sign there. Sodium is one of the few metals that reacts quite violently with water. We're going to look for signs that it has reacted. So if we watch the picture after the sodium and water have interacted, so we've got sodium and water, you can see we have a tremendous release of heat energy, so this is definitely a chemical change. The products that are formed are hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide. And later we'll go back and balance these types of equations. But clearly, these are two different substances. The proof that we've made something new is this tremendous release of heat energy. And the properties of these products would not match the properties of the reactants. All of the matter that was there beforehand, sodium and water, making sodium hydroxide and hydrogen, all of the mass of the sodium and water ends up in the sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. Okay. We don't turn this matter into energy. This energy that you see given off here comes from the difference in energy between the reactants and the products. The products have less energy. So the reactants had energy here, products have energy down here, and all of this heat and light are the energy difference between, that's delta E, change in energy. All of the mass is there. We have not converted matter into energy. We've simply changed chemical energy into kinetic potential energy.